Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some foil prices that have been going up. Foils have always been kind of trending due to EDH and the older the foil, the normally the better. Some of these are kind of very huge, huge percentages and if you own them, it's probably okay to move them at this point in time. Uh, we've seen that the Urge's Destiny, 7th edition, 8th edition, Urza's Legacy, all very expensive foils. And they don't have to be a great card. Even 10th edition and Evasion and Ravnica, I mean, cards that used to be considered janky and can be played in an EDH deck. And the more foil bulk you have and the older it is, the better the better the value will become later. Uh, mainly because you never know. And at the end of the day, one of the truths is bulk, bulk foils, not bad. Now there's two ways that you can define bulk. You never want to buy bulk from someone who does MTG finance because there's no way you get any value. So they value their time at zero. So finding a five cent card is exciting for some people that means you're not even going to get a five cent buy list card you're just going to get true bulk uh, true bulk as in the foils are just utter crap so if you're buying it from someone i would heavily suggest buying it from someone who may have is leaving the game maybe your friend i Found that the most profitable collections are your friends' collections who recently got married and now they have to move the stuff and they no longer play Magic. They have a sizable collection and they know what it is at. So one of my friends, uh, Jake, he knows his collection is probably worth $5,000, but just to get rid of it, he'll sell it to me or he actually sold it to another friend, Kobe, for what was it, five fifty, dollars and then like a dinner which was only like $50. So let's say $600 for a collection he knows he can buy list for at least, let's say 2000 But he doesn't want to wait for the GP. He doesn't want to go to the GP. He doesn't want to think about magic and he wants his space today. Uh, he lives in Galleria. So this is a good card that I want to talk about. Uh, reserve list foils, yeah. There's a few of them. And they've all been incredibly expensive. You feel like reserve lists is spiking? Take a look at the how hard reserve list foils are spiking. Uh, I don't know if there's any left that hasn't really spiked up, but it makes sense. I mean, why not, right? It makes sense. So back to my where to find them. Uh, you don't want to buy bulk from someone who dodge magic for like a living uh, just because you're never going to find anything of value in it it's already been looked over a few dozen times and there's nothing there so for foil for foil cards uh, it's a little easier because there's less of them and each of them has a semi amount of money but look for urge of legacy urge of destiny seven edition eighth edition invasion mccainian mask anything even Meriden, original Meriden, the foils there are insane for some comments and uncommons. Uh, look it over, look for lands, look for artifacts that generate mana. These are all going to be expensive. So like Shine of, Shrine of the Burning Raids is just a crazy foil, although the regular card is worth not that much. I mean, it has gone up a little bit in price, but it's not nearly as expensive as the foil, right? So when you talk about foil cards there's a lot of surprising stuff people are less likely to know the multiplier on a foil sh a shrine of the burning rage than on pretty much any other card they might know every other card but they're not going to know this one and the reason they're not going to know this one has a lot to do with um it doesn't make sense right it's like okay and has a lot to do with eda so if you want to figure out which cards uh are you know, maybe more valuable, more likely to go up in price, more likely to spike. Uh, see how many prints it has. See what the original print is. 
and pull up an EDH list and see what commons and uncommons are being played uh, heavily. All right, so we go to Ixlon. I am pretty sure that the foil pirates will have some value long term. Uh, they have spiked a lot. A few of them have spiked quite a bit, but uh, people like pirates. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was a very successful franchise, and before then, you had One Piece, and uh, people like pirates, and I don't see them. I see them wanting to foil out the pirate deck just because of where the foils are. You have free pirates in Macadian Mask, I believe, maybe slightly more. I know you have one at common, uncommon, and rare, that play style, and then the sacrifice of permanent, unless your opponent pays two. And then I know you have Portal, but Portal didn't come in foil. And then I know you had Portal Second Age, but that didn't come in foil either. So you're not looking at a huge amount. Oh, and then Mirage had like one or two pirates. You're not looking at a huge amount of them uh, outside of the recent sets. And recent stuff compare in comparison is just very, very cheap. So I do feel like the pirates in foil are interesting as a hold. I want to go out and buy them, but nonetheless... Artifacts, foil artifacts, no matter how, I'm, I'm, this one's very good, but it's, is it $10 good? I don't know. Foil artifacts is where it is at. Um, it is something that is super obvious. The more decks a card can be played in, the more expensive the deck will be, or more expensive the card will be. And artifacts can be played in, a, I don't even know if, like what deck couldn't play artifacts. Maybe there's some weird EDH commander that doesn't play artifacts. Maybe Kataki, right? You don't want to be playing artifacts in a Kataki deck. So uh, overall, I mean, foil artifacts, the older the better. They don't have to be rare. They can be on commons and commons. Look for them. Uh, there's a lot of flea markets. This Saturday, there was a garage sale in my neighborhood, and there was no magic cards, of course, but that would be another good place to find true bulk. So you want, there's a difference between sorted bulk and unsorted bulk. Unsorted bulk is very good because it's kind of fun. You're buying like a giant booster pack or a giant box of magic cards, and you don't know what's in it. Sorted bulk is the worst because it's just junk, right? You could light you probably would be better off buying a log, a piece of wood for your that you can set on fire than the equivalent of that many magic cards. And I've been I've been seeing more and more of this um, type of bulk where someone has looked it over. Someone who has a buy list in front of of them has looked it over like dozens of times, and they've taken out even the seances. And the rares are truly, truly bulk. And then the um, foils are really crappy and have no no ability to go up in price. So, yeah, I mean, as more people learn about magic and more people understand magic finance, you're going to see that. You're going to see that someone can, can, yeah, I mean, yeah. So here's why I feel like foils are, like foil lands good. Why foils are going up in price? Um, it, it's really simple. They're old. Uh, so a foil, a Macadian Mask Bazaar, not many foil copies exist, even though the regular copy is really bad and doesn't see any play. The foil copy is quite valuable. Uh, I do want to take a, a discussion on the foil Nico Bolas and how different artwork affects the foil. Always buy the original, always buy the original and foil. Uh, and if it has unique artwork, that is worth looking at. This is unique artwork. Uh, this is Nico Bolas with non-Planeswalker artwork and foil. So, I don't know. It, it's crazy that this card can keep spiking. I believe this card is now two and a half, three times the MSRP of From the Vault Dragons. Maybe four times. Uh, it's crazy, right? How much money you can make from the Vault sets. Uh, from the Vault Transform is coming out. What do I think about it? I don't, we need to see it. I don't think there's that many great Transform cards, to be honest. 
I, I could see Devil of Secrets. I could see Huntmaster. I could, I actually, there can't be that many of them because there's not many flip cards to begin with. So it's kind of interesting. All right, here's another uh, principle. Old foils, old foils. No, what's this? Okay, message, flea market. Okay, say, hey, do you wanna go to flea market? No, I don't wanna go to flea market. Leave me alone. Okay, then message responded. So old foils just look better in my opinion. They're just more beautiful. They're more in high demand and I would always pick an old foil print over a new one, mainly because the the new print, the new foils I'm not impressed with. Uh, I think overall uh, card quality has gotten down, has gone down. Card art has gone down. Again, this is my opinion. I mean, I grew up playing beta, so I'm used to certain art, like Sarah Angel. In my opinion, that's the ideal beautiful art. That's the angelic. That's the angel art that I would always favor as one but now i'm looking at like 3d renditions and it's like hmm, okay it's not really a painting so when i think of magic the gathering as a kid i thought about paintings right oh these are paintings on cards uh and a lot of my friends actually didn't even play magic not a lot like one friend brad uh didn't play magic and he just loved the artwork and i agreed but today's artwork I don't know, like it's not for me. Personally, it's not for me. Uh, I ugh. I would be hard pressed to say that like, I've really fallen in love. Filio is pretty good. I do like Filio. But even Liliana, The Last Hope, I really wanted to like her artwork. I don't. Um, even like um, the pirates and the dinosaurs and the... I really like. I really wanted to like Vraska's artwork, but I don't. So anyway, old school foils are where is the money is at. Artifacts, lands, that's pretty good. The older the better. The more artifacts, the more lands, the better. And yeah, never buy from. Not, never buy bulk from someone who is quote MTG finance, because that person values their time at zero, and therefore even ten cents seems like a lot of money. So therefore, you won't even get a 10 cent card. Anyway, bye guys.